welcome to another video and welcome to episode four I think of my book box battle. So this month it is coming late because um, I didn't get an Illuma crate this month, I skipped my Illuma crate. Um, my fairy loot was delayed, fairy loot delayed sending the books out this month and then it got delivered while I was away and because every are super helpful, they didn't tell me where they'd delivered it to. So I just had to wait for a friendly neighbor to be like, oh, she's back. So anyway, doesn't matter. I have now got my fairy loot box. Um, so if you haven't seen before, my book box battle is where I will unbox my book box books, which is really hard to say. And then I pick from my jar of other old book box books, um, I pick as many books as I can to get it up, well, as many, as, as many books as I need to get it up to four titles. Um, I read the first chapters and then I will pick which book I am most excited to continue reading in a vlog. Hopefully I can get through a couple. Um, so we will go with that. I will say as well, I have now subscribed to the Fairy Loot Romanticy box, which means from next month, I will be receiving three boxes a month. Um, so only picking one additional. I'm going to see how it goes. I might top it to like five books that I'm reading the first chapters of, but we will see. Anyway, I don't have any scissors here, so I'm going to have to just like rip into this box. But let's go. So the april theme march theme is swan lake i have seen what the book is because like i said i'm really late getting it so i have been spoiled but i, I chose to be spoiled um we have got very pretty sprayed and stenciled edges and the book is a feather so black by lyra Celine. very very pretty that back is gorgeous i'm obsessed with those edges I don't know what this book is about um what I'm going to do is take the heart the dust jacket off and show you the rest of it so the hardback is actually absolutely stunning um can you see there is a kind of motif of feathers very lightly in the background beneath the foiling which is very pretty um we have got end papers which are identical and it is of course signed I wonder if we have a map oh we've got a bound in letter from the author uh, we don't have any maps or anything and on the dust jackets like I said this is the dust jacket that we've had and then the reverse is the standard edition I might actually prefer the standard edition and what I actually really like is the reverse has got the blurb and like the author information on it as well so if you do reverse it you've got all of the information I'm not going to reverse it right now because that's I'm not going to but I might um so I will just read out the synopsis because like I said I have not heard of this book a Feather So Black is a sizzling fantasy romance set in a world of perilous magic and moonlit forests, spinning a seductive tale of a changeling princess, her cursed sister and the dangerous Fey Lord she must defeat to save her family. In a kingdom where magic has been lost, Fear is a rare changeling. She was left behind by the wicked fair folk when they stole the High Queen's daughter, Ela. When a hidden gate to the world, worlds of the Fey... When a hidden gate to the world of the fair folk is discovered, Fia is tasked by the High Queen to retrieve Ela and break her curse. But she doesn't go alone. With her prince, with her is Prince Rogan, Ela's betrothed and Fia, Fia's childhood best friend. These names are really hard to say for some reason. As the two journey into a world where magic winds through the roots of the trees and beauty can be a deadly illusion, Fia's mission is com complicated by her feelings for the prince and her unexpected attraction to the dark-haired Fey Lord holding Ela captive. Irian might be more monster than man, but he seems to understand fear in a way that nobody, no one ever has. Sounds very fantasy romancy. Um, one thing that's just, this is just me being really finicky. Can we see this on here? There's basically, there's a typo on here, and... Um, Prince 
Rogan is his name. That means Prince should be capitalised. Uh, anyway, that's just me being being a little bit anal, to be totally honest. So this one is the first book on my book box battle. I need to pick three out of my jar. Let's give him a shake. I'm going with that one. That one. And that one. So we have got Some Desperate Glory by Emily Tesh. Excellent. Ooh, okay. A Study in Drowning by, by Ava Reed. And Ooh, The Red Scholar's Wake by Alette de Baudard. I'm going to go and get those three books. This is an exciting mix. Okay, so I've got my books. Here is my stack and beautiful edges, which actually all go together really nicely. There's lots of greens and purples in these. Um, so I'm excited by this stack. So we've got A Study in Drowning. This is, I believe, a kind of dark academia. It is YA, so I'm a little bit hmm, about it, but I am very intrigued. The Red Scholar's Wake is a sci-fi. This one follows sentient ships. I'm a bit question mark about this one, I'll be totally honest, because I'm not sure how I feel about sentient ships. Um, Some Desperate Glory is another sci-fi. This one is more of like a kind of space opera, I believe. I have read the first chapter of this one before. And when I did that first chapter challenge, I was very unintrigued by this book. Then I read the first chapter and I was like, oh, colour me intrigued. So I actually have got quite high hopes for this one. And then obviously A Feather So Black, um, which is a romanticy. So I think, I think that's going to be my order. No, wrong way, wrong way. I got it wrong, I got it wrong. Wait, 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 wait. I'm still, yeah, no, I'm going to do that. I'm sticking, I'm sticking. I think this is going to be my order. I think Some Desperate Glory is going to be the book that will come out and I want to read. It is in fact on my TBR this month because it fits a couple of um, magical readathon prompts. Um, but it's one of these where it's kind of a, a possibility. It fits a couple of magical readathon prompts, but also other books on my TBR fit those same prompts. But I am intrigued by this one and I know I was intrigued by the first chapter. A Feather So Black, I think, is going to be my second most intriguing book. Um, I like romanticy, so even though I really don't like the term romanticy, I just that just gives me a little bit of the ick. A Study in Drowning, I'm putting third. This one does really intrigue me, but YA can be a little bit hit and miss. Um, so, fingers crossed, it'll be good. And The Red Scholar's Wake, I'm going to put fourth just because I don't know how I feel about the prospect of sentient ships. So that is my stack. Maybe that way around. I think I've got everything upside down now. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, that is, that's my stack. That's my, my thoughts, my predictions, my predictions. Um, I am now going to go and read the first chapters and I will come back to you and let you know what I thought and also let you know what I picked. I will say as well, because I don't know if this has come up before, but because I have already read the first chapter of Some Desperate Glory, I will be starting this one with chapter two. So I'm going to basically be continuing from where I left off when I did a first chapter challenge, probably 12 months ago now. Um but I'm excited. Okay, so I've read Some Desperate Glory. Um, I had read chapter one a while ago, and so I've read the second chapter. Um, I'll be honest, I read the first chapter probably a year ago, and I can't bother to reread it. If I do pick that one as my book to read, I will actually start again from the beginning. Um, but this is intriguing. The So this one, we're basically, we're following um, our character Kia, who... Um, lives on like basically I, I think Earth has been destroyed and humanity like live in this spaceship um, and Kia 
has always wanted to be a fighter to avenge the destruction of, of Earth. Um, however, there are different sectors, one of which is called nursery, which is where you go to breed. And from the synopsis, we know that Kiev is going to be um, allocated to nursery. So I imagine that the story is going to get a lot bigger after that happens. That I, I think what's going to happen again, I'm surmising from the synopsis, is that um, she's going to like steal the ship and is going to go off and like explore the universe herself. It gives me Aurora, Aurora Rising vibes. And also... Yeah, no, I guess just really, Aur oh, I can't speak today, Aurora Rising. Um, I am intrigued. I am also very intrigued to see what the rest of the books are going to sound like. So, on to book number two, A Feather So Black. Okay, so I've read the first chapter of A Feather So Black. Right now... I'm intrigued and I think I am putting it above some desperate glory. However, however, A Feather So Black is intriguing at this moment in time, but I can see that it's going to be a bit too fast paced and fun. Um, our main character, whose name I don't know, Fira, I think it was, um, she is clearly a champion at everything ever. Um, so not my favorite trope but i am intrigued so so far this is what my stack is looking at feather so black top some desperate glory second let's see what a study in drowning okay so i've read the first chapter of study and drowning um it's quite long it's 20 pages the writing is very lyrical there's long sentences, it's all very like kind of flowy and flowery and it's not the kind of writing that I enjoy. Um, I won't be reading this one. Like, I, I will read it eventually probably, <laughs> but I don't want to read it right now. Um, the other thing, and I feel like this is a bit of a kind of trend that I've seen with a couple of authors, is this is very Welsh inspired. I don't believe that Ava Reed is Welsh. But like the land is is clear. Um, the author who she's obsessed with is Meriden. The book's called Ang Harrod. They're all very, very Welsh names. And part of me is curious to see whether or not the um, audiobook pronounces them in the Welsh way especially with like the issues that there's been with, you know, with Rebecca Yaros and the fourth wing um, use of Gaelic. I'd be interested to see what, how, how a studying journaling has done it and whether she, it has been done properly and used, like I said, the Welsh pronunciations. Um, but yeah, my, my stack at the moment, oh, one of these books, I don't know which one, it's very slippery. Uh, is looking like this. Studying Drowning has gone to the bottom of the stack. It's not intriguing me right now. But on to the Red Scholar's Wake and I'll let you know what my final thoughts. And finally, read the first chapter of the Red Scholar's Wake. Um, this is, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this is intriguing, but weird. So we've got a sentient ship who is one of these people on the cover, I think, um, kind of like comes as like a, a form of a woman. And she is looking to marry a prisoner to keep the prisoner safe so that the prisoner can like work out who the person on the ship is that's like the traitor. I, I don't really know, I'll be totally honest. I was intrigued though. I was more intrigued than I thought I would be. But I am going to put it, if I can pick up this stack with one hand, I am putting it underneath some desperate glory. I'm putting it third in the stack. It is intriguing and I would like to read it. And to be totally honest, some desperate glory is on my TBR this month. If it wasn't, it Red Scholar's Wake might be slightly, might be above some desperate glory. Um, 
but because Some Desperate Glory came out of the pot and it's on my TBR, it sort of makes sense for me to push it up a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, this is my stack. So I think I'm going to be reading A Feather So Black. Um, let's put the pot down because it's heavy. See, so yeah, I'm going to be reading A Feather So Black, which is good because this one is the fairy loot book for April. And um, I will most likely be getting to some desperate glory at some point this month anyway but I will try and read it this week so that is I guess my TBR Feather So Black is the main book potentially getting into some desperate glory if by some miracle I can read a third book this week it will be The Red Scholar's Wake Hello. Oh, I've got Bracken about to jump on me. It's Sunday morning, so it's 10 o'clock on Sunday. Me and this little one have gone out for a walk and now we're back home. Um, I am currently reading A Feather So Black. I'm not very far into it. I'm about 50 pages into it, I think. I'm on chapter six, which is page 64. So yeah, not a huge amount of the way through. Um, I'm ever so slightly regretting my decision to read this one. I'm hoping that it's going to pick up soon. Um, basically, so far in the 64 pages that I have read, we have met Fia, who is a changeling. Um, and we've met Rogan, who is a prince. We found out that they, when they, they were childhood friends, when they were 16, they slept together. Rogan was then taken away from the palace and sent back to his dad because he was like a fostering of the queen. And um, now the two of them have been um, put together to go on a quest to the fairylands to find the princess who was swapped for Fia when they were younger. Um, and and that's, that's all I know. Um, that's also about the first line of the synopsis. So the synopsis intrigued me when I did my first chapter challenge the first chapter intrigued me unfortunately nothing else has happened so what I am hoping is that as we continue that synopsis is going to actually come into play and I will get some some interest from there um yeah like I said at the moment it's just it's given Akatar but honestly, the, the thing is, right, we've all read hundreds of books that give Akatar, and none of them really do it that well because they're either doing an Akatar retelling and just not good, you know, just read the original, or they're, they just don't quite hit the mark and so far this is just not quite hitting the mark there's what I'm calling forced banter so they're kind of like banteriness just doesn't feel natural it feels very put in for the sake of insert banter here um not a fan uh there is some pining, but not a lot. Um, I also feel like the world building is currently lacking. I don't understand the magic at all. Um, it's very inspired by Irish mythology. So the fairy land is Tinaug, um, which is, I don't know if I pronounced that right, which is the, the Irish fairy lands. Um, but... I don't know whether there is more Irish mythology. There's a lot of Irish place names. And it's just that kind of weird mix where it feels like it's trying to be very high fantasy, but isn't explaining anything. It isn't building this world at all. It's not explaining any of the terms or any of the magic or anything. Um, but it's also trying to be very, it's really trying to kind of lean into 
this is going to be a romance which again at the moment I'm not seeing um I'm also not entirely sure what what Fia is she says she's a changeling and at a point she's saying but you know I'm flesh and blood blah blah blah, blah. but then at a point she's saying that actually she was made from like sticks and twigs so that if she is like if she's killed she turns back into sticks and twigs so I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what she is this is what I mean by the world building I just don't really know what's going on yet um I'm I'm only like I don't know about 15% of the way through so and and the plot itself hasn't started um so we know that they're going to be going on this quest to the Feylands they haven't reached there yet and I'm sure that's going to be probably around about the 100 page mark and that's going to be where the plot starts but I do kind of feel like so far I'm not seeing I'm not seeing that world building to understand where that plot's going to take us um I'm not yet bought into this relationship if there is one um yeah we will see we'll see I'm going to continue um like I said it's about 10 o'clock on Sunday today I've got a couple of chores that I want to get done and then we have got agility at two o'clock so I'd like to try and read for about two hours this morning before going out to agility. Um, and then I might try and read a little bit more after I come home as well. But yeah, so far, it's not bad, but it's not the best either. I have bashed my hard back. This is why I should probably use some of the hundreds of like covers I've got with me see I've, I've slightly bashed it there luckily I don't really care it when I bash things or bend things and the only reason I've taken the dust jacket off this one is because I want to reverse it anyway I don't normally take the dust jackets off anyway I'm gonna have breakfast and I'm then gonna probably start reading actually I'm gonna put a load of laundry and then I'm gonna start hello so I am up to chapter seven I'm up to page 78 in this one and um it's very, very overwritten. Um, so what I mean by that is where she could use, you know, one or two words. She's using ten. Um, I'm trying to find an example in here. There was a paragraph that literally said nothing. And it's, it's just... Archways of rough iron swooped gaunt as a skeleton's ribs. Huge walls of tempered glass hung shattered in their panes like gaping mouths full of broken teeth. Delicate finials of hammered brass dangled askew. Bronze sconces cupped shadows instead of flames. All that is saying is that it's a dilapidated greenhouse. Um, I feel like you can really tell that the first chapter has been heavily edited of course to bring people in um and the levels of edits are already less than they were at the very start um yeah i'm i am ever so slightly struggling with the writing style at the moment i do want to continue um i would like to try and get to about page 150 i think just to see really how i'm feeling about it um but yeah i am slightly struggling with the writing style so hello um i've got the kettle on waiting for it to pour so i can make a cup of tea and i thought well that's doing that i'm gonna update you on a feather so black uh <laughs> i'm not loving it so i am how far through am i i'm 130 pages in and to be honest i don't know what my last update was so i might be updating you at the exact same point as i updated you yesterday possible um but i'm not a fan of the writing i'm finding the writing incredibly overwritten um i'm finding it's very overly descriptive it's using too many words um everything is a metaphor everything you know a lake can't just be a lake it's a tumultuous deep dark gloomy lake and I'm like, do you know what? Sometimes a lake can be a lake. Um, and yeah, I 
I'm finding it just, I'm finding the writing style quite difficult actually. Um, I'm finding I'm just not really engaging with it. Because I'm not engaging with the writing, I'm finding it a bit of a slog. And the plot hasn't yet really kicked in. It is a fantasy romance. So I'm kind of waiting for the romance plot line to properly start. We have met what I believe are going to be all of the key characters. Um, like in the romance but nothing no romance has has romanced yet um, I've decided I'm gonna just while I'm talking to you I'm gonna nip upstairs and get a book cover for it because I have dented a, a corner um, so yeah that's my kind of thoughts I'm, I'm struggling with it I'm gonna keep on reading at least for another bit um, just because like I said I want to get to the point where the romance starts because I feel like that's going to be more engaging. Um, and yeah, at the moment I'm just struggling with it because I feel like one of the reasons I'm struggling is just, it's the romance isn't starting and I don't like the writing style. I'm just gonna turn around and say hello to Bella who's hiding in the windowsill. Hey boo boo. No, don't sit on the cactus. Silly kitten. So, I want to get to the page 200 mark at least before I make any decision. I'm not sure if it's a DNF yet. Um, if it does stay being just a hard work, it potentially could be a DNF and I really don't want to DNF it. Um, partly because I don't I don't enjoy DNF in books. I DNF books fairly often, but it's not, you know, I'm reading a book because I want to enjoy it. Um, not because I started it for the intention to DNF it. And it would also mean it's the second adult fairy loop book this year um, that I've received this year that I've DNF'd. And once I DNF a book, I will generally unhaul it as well. So I've already DNF'd and unhauled the City of Stardust, um, which I think was the January book. And I don't want to get rid of this one as well, just because, to be totally honest, book subscriptions aren't cheap. And if I'm, you know, if I'm DNFing, I, I don't need that subscription. Um, and it does make me kind of think, well, do I do I need to be spending that money? I mean, I'm now getting three subscription boxes a month because I've got Romanticy as well. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money that I'm spending every month on new books. And, um, you know, if they're not ones that I'm going to like, I do use my skips. But if they're not ones that I'm going to like, why have I got that subscription? So I do want to give give the book a, a good fair chance um like I said I'm just struggling with it at the moment to be honest uh it's Monday at the moment I don't know if I said this earlier it's Monday evening at the moment I think as well like because I am struggling with it um I'm not really inclined to read oops that was the fridge door so Last night I started a, a new crochet project while re-watching uh, Bridgerton series one. Um, so I'm more excited to... left the frame then completely. I'm more excited to um, continue my crochet project than I am to read my book. And I could, I could get like an audio book of A Feather So Black, but I don't want to. Like I could audio it while, um, while crocheting, but again, like I said, I don't want to. I'm not enjoying it enough. And because it's a new release, I don't know if it's gonna be on Spotify. So I don't wanna pay money for it, for an audio. I made brownies yesterday, so I'm, I'm scoffing my brownies. Um, yeah, so I, you know, when you're just in those moods where you're like, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm forcing myself to read this book, which puts me automatically in a less engaged 
position with it you know I'm, because I feel like I'm forcing myself to read it it makes me not want to read it and then because I don't want to read it I've got to force myself to read it if I can get out of the way please no off brownies are definitely not for you so with all of that all said and done I think I'm going to read while I drink this cup of tea Bracken will you get off me I think I'm going to read while I drink this cup of tea. Hopefully, like I said, I'm about, I'm about 1.30 at the moment. Try and get to about at least 1.50. Um, I'm going to try and check in with you at the 200 page mark, which I will attempt to get to tonight. <sighs> but probably once I had dinner, I'm turning on Bridgeton and going back to my crochet. Hello. Um, so I've got up to page 150, which is the end of part one. And um. I don't actually know what time it is. It's now six o'clock. That took me about, I think, over half an hour to read um, those 20 pages because I fell asleep, um, which honestly says it all for the excitement of the book. So, um, we are now at, like I said, at the end of part one. Um, I do want to continue reading again everything that I said earlier none of my views have changed I'm it's it's not engaging me at all at all um but I'm going to do some crochet I have got let's see a sleepy Bella and a sleepy Bracken on my lap that pile of white cushions is because I thought I'd do some spring cleaning and took all my cushion covers off yesterday and um now I need to wash them um, but yeah, I'm going to go back to my crochet. I think I'm going to stick on Bridgeton and go back to my crochet. Um, I don't want to read a feather so black anymore today. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and I, mean, I I probably should put on like I have. I'm also reading Waking Gods at the moment and I'm thinking I should get the audio book of that because I believe the audio is really, really good. Um, and I could listen to that while I crochet, which would be slightly more productive than watching Bridgerton. But again, I, I don't want to. Do not want to. So I'm going to watch TV. Um, I might like watch an episode or so while I haven't even thought what I'm having for dinner yet, but watch an episode while I... Um, do a bit of crochet and while I eat and then go back to reading for a little bit um, later this evening but yeah um, I'm a bit disappointed if I'm honest hello so it's it's Wednesday night it's like 8 30 and um I have a slight confession to make I have not picked up a feather so black a feather so black um all week um, instead, what I have been doing is watching Bridgerton and crocheting a blanket. So I've got my <laughs> my carrot patch and and a turnip patch, and I started making some little granny squares. Um, I've also got got single single carrots, and I'm currently making where is it? I'm currently making a bobbly patch. Um, so that's what I've been doing this week instead of reading and I I don't want to read if they're so black um I have no I have not like missed the book um I have no inclination to pick the book up um in the mornings when I've been normally I read in the morning while well, I have a cup of tea um and Bracken has her breakfast before I take her out on a walk but I've been watching videos on YouTube or scrolling on TikTok instead of reading. I have been picking up a bit of um, Stormkeeper's Battle. But I, like I said, I have no inclination to pick up A Feather So Black. So that leaves me with a bit of a conundrum. Because do I, do I DNF it? Or do I sort of read a little bit more and see see how I kind of feel about it um, soon. I don't really know what I'm doing. I haven't made a decision yet. 
I, the thing is, is I don't want to DNF because I'm not, I'm just, I'm just a bit ambivalent towards it. I'm not disliking it. So I don't want to like DNF for the sake of it. Cause like I said, I'm not, I'm not hating it. I'm, it's just boring. It's just that nothing's happening. Um, oh, that was suddenly very bright on my face. So yeah, basically that, that's my update. Um, I am going to, it's a bit better. I'm not convinced I'm gonna read anything um, tomorrow or tonight, but I'd rather give myself the opportunity to do that before like ending this vlog. Um, but yeah, this vlog might be ending sort of pretty much with no more updates and that, you know, I, I haven't read anything. Um, which I think makes this the most unsuccessful book box battle of vlog this year, so far. So, yeah, fun, 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 fun. Um, yeah, don't know really what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm going to have a snack. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make myself a walk. Hello, so it's it's Thursday night and um, I'm still reading A Pencil Black. I'm up to page 200. <sighs> I think it's going to end up being a DNF. Um, I, I kind of want to keep on reading until like the romance starts, but also I'm two hundred pages into a four hundred and fifty page book, and there is no romance and there is basically no plot. Every month, Fia and Rogan go to like the magic lands, and then they come back. And then the next month they go again, and, and they come back. And that's it. That's all, all that happens. We've met, I forgot his name already, Irian or something, who's like the, the fey prince. He's going to be the other love interest. He, of course, Shadow Magic, um, which honestly, like, you know how sometimes something is just so overused and you're just like I'm, I'm not interested in this anymore you're not doing something new and exciting with shadow magic you're using shadow magic just because it appeals it appeals to the girlies and i'm not the girlies right now um so i am torn because i i want to keep on like i said i, I want to see at least the romance start and get some sort of like interest but I honestly am not convinced that there is going to be a level of interest for me in this book I think it is going to be a DNF I'm just trying to like skim through at the moment and see because I'm on part two at the moment so I'm going to see if there is a part three and where that is Still don't like the writing. Can't find a part three. Maybe there isn't a part three. Maybe it's only just two parts. Oh, there we go. Are you part three? Part three. Okay, that is at page 350. I'm not entirely sure I want to read another 150 pages. And if I'm reading 350 pages of a book, that's only 450 pages. I may as well finish it. Um, it's 10 o'clock. I'm going to go to bed. And I'm going to come back to you in the morning. And I'm going to think about it then. Hello. It's it's Friday. Well, it's kind of Friday lunchtime now. Um, I'm up to page 230 of a feather so black and um i'm gonna dnf it um i've just read the first sex scene and i found it incredibly uncomfortable and just weird and kind of you know sometimes sex scenes can be sexy and sometimes they can just be kind of like Ugh. this was an ill one um so i feel <laughs> I mean, I've, I've given it a, a good shot and, and I can't get on board with it. I also want to just um, just highlight what I mean by the writing. That's incredibly awful. Uh, so there's, a, there's a, a line here. 
but as much as I ached, I knew in the root-tangled cavern of my heart that nothing had changed. What the fuck is a root-tangled cavern of your heart? Um, yeah, that that's the kind of level of metaphor that I'm not on board with. It's that sort of flowery purple writing that is very reminiscent of Erin Morgenstern, who I kind of hate. And um, yeah, no, this this is is not not for me. And I am really disappointed because that is the second adult fairy loop book that I've received this year that I have DNF'd and will be unhauling. I've only read two of them. So I started reading City of Stardust, DNF'd, unhauled. Um, I started reading, no, I didn't. I um, so started reading City of Stardust and I DNF'd that one and have unhauled it. I haven't read A Fate Inked in Blood. I haven't read to, to Cage a God, and now I am DNF and unhauling A Feather So Black. So, of the four adult fairy loot books I've received this year, the two that I have tried to read, I've DNF'd and unhauled. That is, that's not good stats, is it? Um, and I'll be totally honest, part of the idea of this vlog project is not only to get book box books off my TBR because some of them have sat there for ages but I do also want to just I guess just be aware of like what what subscriptions I've got do I need them am I am I getting books that I'm enjoying um because at the moment I've got adult fairy loot fairy loot romanticy and a lumicrate and honestly, that's that's over eighty pounds a year. Eighty pounds a year. That's about eighty pounds a month on book boxes, which is a extortionate amount of money. Like that is a ridiculous amount of money. And I'm not. I I can't. You know, it's not sustainable for me to keep all three boxes. But I do need to kind of yeah, make a decision of like am I actually enjoying any of the books that I'm receiving and if I am great if I'm not what am I doing I feel like I've been better about using my skips on a luma crate but I think I'm now out of skips on a luma crate which is also a bit concerning because um what do I do there but and again, you know, with A Feather So Black, obviously this one won my, my battle. I had four, it was pitted against three other books and the first chapter intrigued me the most. So, you know, the the synopsis intrigued me enough for me to, like, keep the box. The first chapter intrigued me, but I've still ended up DNFing. So, yeah, disappointed. Um, and I'm going to need to consider really what I'm doing with my book boxes soon like I'm not going to make any decision and cancel any book boxes like right now um but there will potentially be cancellations coming in the future if there are one if I just if I'm repeatedly not enjoying the books that I'm receiving then I don't want to be receiving those books and let's be honest yes they are very beautiful special editions but if there is a book that sounds incredible and that I want to get, I can always go to a shop and buy it. Like it won't be the same edition, sure, but that is always an option. It'll be the same words. So yeah, I think I might need to start reassessing and maybe maybe I need to do some stats and like go through the books that I've received in Illumicrate and Adult Fairy Loot and decide, you know, like, is there what is my like success rate with these boxes and do I do I need to unsubscribe from one anyway on that bum note I'm gonna end this vlog um let me know if you have read A Feather So Black um would you have picked that one out of the four options from the battle at the beginning so what were my other options Some Desperate Glory Red Scholar's Wake Study and Drowning. Kind of wish I'd read 
um, some desperate glory if I'm totally honest because it's on my TBR and I'm probably going to end up reading it this month anyway my other issue sorry I'm, I'm apparently I'm not finished in this vlog now my other thing that's that's really like irritating me about Feather So Black is that because I haven't been enjoying it I haven't been wanting to read it um, it's put me in a reading slump so I've not actually really read anything all week um, like my other book that I'm reading is The Stormkeeper's Battle, which is a middle grade. It's taken me a week to read 200 pages of this. For context, I read 70 of those pages in one sitting when I was having a bath. So it's affected, basically it's taken me six days to read 140 pages, 130 pages, which is not great. I'm hoping to get that one finished today though, just so it's off my TBR. Anyway. That is this vlog done. I'm gonna hope that I can kind of like kick myself into gear and get some get some reading done this weekend. Um, I think next week's vlog is possibly gonna be just me reading my magical readathon books rather than more of like a themed vlog. Um, but I will see you in the next one. Bye.